Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien, a powder for dragon. The strange rat was named Arthur. He was stocky, square, and muscular with bright, hard eyes. He looked efficient. You might call him our chief engineer, said Nicodemus to Mrs. Frisbee, as indeed you might call Justin the captain of the guard if we had any such titles, but we don't. Mr. Aegis thought Arthur should come along, though he didn't say why. So we still don't know what your problem is. Isabella was gone. She had dropped her papers on the floor again when the others entered, and Justin, to her intense confusion and visible delight, had helped her pick them up. Hello, Izzy, he said. How's the reading coming? It's fine, she said. I finished the third reader last week. Now I'm on the fourth. The fourth reader, reader already. You're getting quite grown up. At that, she had almost dropped the papers a third time and made a dash for the door. It did not matter. Mrs. Frisbee noticed if Justin called her Izzy, just so he called her something. Nicodemus closed the door behind her and then sat down on one of the benches facing Mrs. Frisbee. The others sat down too. Mr. Ages stretching his splendid leg in front of him. Nicodemus took the reading glass from his satchel, opened it, and through it gravely examined Mrs. Frisbee's face. You will forgive the glass and the scrutiny, he said. When I lost my left eye, I also damaged the right one. I can see little close up without the glass. Indeed, not very much, even with it. At length, he folded the glass and put it on the table. Now, he said, what is it we can do to help you? So Mrs. Frisbee recounted once more the events that had led to her coming there, and at the end repeated what the owl had advised her to say. Move the house into the lee of the stone, she added. I don't understand just what he meant by that. Jeremy the Crow says it means the side where there's no wind. What good would that do? I think I know what he meant, said Nicodemus. In a broad sense, lee means the sheltered side. A bird flying over Mr. Fitz, Mrs. Fitzgibbon's garden would notice something most of us would miss. He reached into his satchel and took out a sheet of paper and a pencil. He opened the reading glass again as he talked, and drew, he drew a sketch. When a farmer plows a field with a big rock in it, he plows around the rock, close on each side, but leaving a triangle of unplowed land on each end. Mrs. Frisbee's house is beside the rock and will get plowed up, probably, and probably crushed, as the owl said, but if we can move it a few feet so that it lies buried behind the rock in the lee, then she and her children can stay in it for as, can stay in it as long as they need to. From the air, the way the owl sees it, the garden would look like this. He inspected the sketch through his reading glass and placed it on the table. Mrs. Frisbee climbed up on the bench and looked at it. It was a rough map showing the garden, the big stone near the middle, and the way the furrows made by the plow would curve round, around it, rather like waves around a boat. Show me where your house is buried, said Nicodemus. Mrs. Frisbee pointed to the spot in the sketch. I know where that's... I know where that cinder block is, said the rat named Arthur. In fact, I thought about bringing it in, but decided it was too long a haul. They had it tied on the top of a harrow for weight, and it fell off just as they were finishing the garden. Can you move it? asked Nicodemus, pointing at the sketch. To this spot right here and bury it again? Yes, said Arthur. That shouldn't be hard. Mrs. Frisbee was delighted, looking at the map. It all became clear, and she could see what a beautifully simple idea it was. When Mr. Fitzgibbon plowed, he would go right past their house, and they would not have to move until Timothy was well and until the weather was truly warm. She remembered again what her husband had said, how easy to unlock a door when you have the key. She had found the key, or rather, the owl had found it. Nicodemus asked Arthur, How long will it take? Depends. With a party of ten, a couple of hours. With twenty, maybe an hour. We can spare twenty, but it's still too long, he looked worried. So did Arthur. Yes, he said, we'll have to work at night. But even so, there's just no cover at all. It's wide open. Yes, we'll have to take care of Dragon, said Justin. Yes, said Mr. Ages. And with that leg, I can't do it. I'd never make it to the bowl. And with this leg, I can't do it. I'd never make it to the bowl, much less get back again. Mrs. Frisbee, looking at their baffled faces, felt through the light subsiding. Obviously, something was wrong. I don't understand, she said. I know about Dragon, of course. At night, said Justin, Dragon prowls the farmyard like a tiger, and you don't see him until he's on top of you. 
Then you can't move my house after all. Well, said Justin, ordinarily, he turned on, he turned to Nicodemus. Should I explain it to her? Yes, said Nicodemus. Ordinarily, said Justin, when we have a long project to do at night, sometimes even by day, we make sure a dragon won't bother us. We put a sleeping powder in his food. Mr. Aegis makes it. He doesn't do the cat any harm, but he stays extremely drowsy for the next eight hours or so. We station a sentry to watch him, and we are free to work. You did it yesterday, cried Mrs. Frisby, remembering the figures, toiling the wire through the grass, remembering how strangely dis disinterested Dragon had seemed when he saw her. I saw the cat sleeping in the yard. Yes, said Justin, but today Mr. Aegis has a broken leg. Then he can't make the powder? It isn't that, said Mr. Aegis. I have plenty of the powder. The trouble is, the trouble is, said Justin, it's Mr. Aegis who puts it in Dragon's dinner bowl and sits inside the farm kitchen. With his broken leg, he can't move fast enough. But why Mr. Aegis, asked Mrs. Fr said Mrs. Frisby. Can't someone else do it? I'd be glad to do it myself, said Justin, but I'm too big. You see, Nicodemus explained, Mrs. Fitzgibbon feeds the cat in the morning and in the evening, and his bowl is always kept in the same place, next to a cabinet in one corner of the kitchen. There's a very shallow space between the floor and the bottom of the cabinet. A few years ago, when we conceived the idea of putting Dragon to sleep, we cut a hole in the floor just behind the cabinet. If we put, anyth if we put anything else, they'd see it. To reach the bowl, Mr. Aegis crawls under the cabinet. When he gets to the edge, he makes a quick dash to the bowl, drops in the powder, and dashes back out of sight. But with a broken leg, he can't dash. We might try leaving some bait outside the house, said Justin. That worked once. Once out of a dozen times, said Nicodemus. It isn't dependable, and we don't have much time. To be safe, we ought to move the block tonight. If we had some cat food, said Justin, thinking aloud, he might eat that even on the porch, because he knows it's his. Maybe tonight I could go in through the attic and down to the kitchen. No you, no use, said Mr. Ages. They keep it in a metal cabinet up on the wall. You couldn't get it without, the cr without a crew, and that would make too much noise. Anyway, said Nicodemus, it would put off moving the block until tomorrow night. Then, said Justin, I guess we do, what we do is stake out scouts wherever we can, try to keep track of Dragon, and hope for the best. Some nights he doesn't go near the garden at all. We might be lucky. Or we might not, said Arthur. I don't like it. We can't dig that block out without some noise, you know. Mrs. Frisby interrupted quietly. There is another way, she said. If Mr. Rages can get into the kitchen, so can I. If you will give me the powder and show me the way, I will try to put it in Dragon's Bowl. Justin said quickly, No, it's not a job for a no, it's no job for a lady. You forget said Mrs. Mrs. Frisbee said, I'm Timothy's mother. If you and Arthur and the others in your group can take risks to save him, surely I can too. And consider this, I don't want any of you to be hurt, maybe even killed by dragon. But even more, I don't want the attempt to fail. Perhaps the worst that will happen to you with luck is that you will have to scatter and run and leave my house unmoved. But then what will happen to us? Timothy at least will die. So if there is no one else to put the cat to sleep, I must do it. This Nicodemus considered and then spoke. She's right, of course. If she chooses to take the risk, we can't deny her the right. To Mrs. Frisby, he added, but you should know that the danger is great. It was in that in the same kitchen yesterday, running from Dragon's Bowl, that Mr. Aegis got his leg broken, and it was doing the same thing last year, that your husband died. And that is the end of that chapter.